Alright, what I'd like to do is show you guys how to find the rate of change um, from a graph. And what we have is a linear graph here, and when we're talking about rate of change, uh, if you guys remember, we wrote down the definition of rate of change. The definition of rate of change is it's the ratio of the change in two quantities. And we're talking about when you're when you're dealing with the linear graph or at the table or between two points, our two quantities are giving me our x and y values. So what we call the rate of change of x and y values is what we call our slope. I'm just gonna write this down here. Slope is the ratio of the change in y values over x values. <coughs> Now you might say, well, all right, Mr. McGlogan, I have this line and I have these two points. Well, remember a point always comes in the form x comma y. So here's my x is negative 2, my y is 0. Over here, x is 2, y is negative 3. And the one example I like to keep on going through is if, you guys, if they're talking about change, what do you mean by change? How do you calculate the change? Well, if I had $20 yesterday and I only have $2 today, what was the change in the amount of money I had? Money and the change in the amount of money I had was 18. It would be, yes, I lost 18, so it would be a negative 18. But the change, what I did was, um, I took how much money I had, which was 20, and I subtracted 2. So when you're trying to find the change, you're finding the difference. Okay, so you're always going to use subtraction. So if I want to find the change in my y values, I need to subtract them. So I'm going to say, well, this y value is 3, so I'm going to say slope. And we're going to get into the general formula for slope in, this, in a little bit. But the general formula for this is going to be negative 3, that's one y value, minus my other y value, which is 0, over the change in my x value, which is um, 2 minus negative 2. Now, one thing to notice is negative 3 minus 0 is obviously going to be negative 3, and 2 minus negative 2, those both become positive, and we get 4. So it's a negative 3 force. Now, if you're still a little bit uneasy about doing it algebraically, when given a graph, you're, you're allowed a, a couple other different ways to solve this problem. So one way we could do this is we can look between these two points and we say, if I was going to read the graph from left to right, how, is, um, how am I changing in my y coordinates? So from left to right, I'm going down how far? And you say, well, you're going down one, two, three. So you say you're going down negative 3. And then from left to right, how far am I going over? And you say you're going over 1, 2, 3, 4. So therefore, my slope is negative 3 over 4. You could also go from right to left. So if I'm going right to left, that means I'm going up, four, or up 3 and to the left, negative 4. So it would be the change in y was 3. So this would be um, 3 over negative 4. And these are equivalent. It doesn't matter which one you say. And I'll show you guys a quick little example. Um, why are they equivalent? Well, 8 divided by negative 2 is equal to negative 8 divided by 2. Because that's negative 4 equals negative 4. Okay? So that's why these two slopes are equivalent. The only difference is one goes left to right and the other one goes right to left. Okay? So it depends how you read it, or you can simply just use the algebraic way and take your two y values, subtract them, and then take your two x values and subtract them. Cool. So that's how you find the rate of change from a graph. Remember, rate of change when dealing with the graph is what we like to call the slope.